I did not get an invite out yesterday because, uh, well, I'm a big fat loser, so it might be a little bit under attended, but we got Jim Jennings in the house and we got Jennifer in the house and we got Josh. So we have a, a, a retinue of J's and that's all I really, really care about. So um, good to have folks here. Um, all right, we're gonna get started and uh, I'm recording and, uh, <laughs> hold on a second. Okay. Hi, Karen. How are you? I see you. Howdy. Did I know that you had your $3 million thing under contract or is that recent or what? Yeah, that's recent. It's hard. But it's great. <laughs> that's awesome. Thank Congratulations. You. Nice work. Full uh, price. Full price. I know. I saw that. When is it set to close? It, well, it has stage closing. It was a, a creative deal. Oh, creative deal. I've never heard stage closing, so that is very creative. So, anyway, um, all right, well, I'm going to get started, and, uh, you know, my goal is not to take everybody's time and tell jokes just to fill up the hour, but uh, I may tell some. Uh, we had four deals in the last week, over $500,000 company-wide. I'm going to start with that, um, and then we're going to move into how to make sure that our fourth quarter of 2018 is a good one. Um, Dale Beatty had a $550,000 closing in uh, commercial in Grand Junction. Camel Hightower, $510,000 closing in Grand Junction. Matt Christian had an $850,000 closing up in the Stanley Basin, which is here in Sun Valley. It's crazy. I can't believe they was able to do that. But Dan Shores in Steamboat, has got great initials, DS, um, he had a million-dollar double-sided closing. So not only does he have Woo! great initials, but DS for double sided and Dan Shores and Derek Spenningson and don't stop and um, just all sorts of things that we could uh, apply the DS. To me, it's usually applied as dumb, sh but not for Dan. Nice job, Dan. Nice job, everybody. And uh, we'll be saying more names soon. Okay. So 2018 is, is three quarters of the way done minus 10 days, um, plus 10 days, whatever. But, uh, you know, we were talking in our MD meeting this morning, and I think a lot of agents have a sense that oh, I get to take a break right now. It's uh, the peak season of summer is done, and Christmas is two months, three months away, and so I can go on vacation. I'm going to mute some. I think, Karen, I'm going to mute you for now. So, um, and, and it's sort of a down season for folks, and, and all the feedback you get from the top agents and from your MDs and from the brokers who have been doing this forever is that Anyone thinks about anyone who thinks about this period as the off season is not getting the job done. Keeping in mind that if if thirty percent of the agents in your MLS picture this is the off season, this is a chance for you to make it your on season and to pick up that market share because people are ignoring what's happening because they think they're done. Okay, so two sports metaphors, three sports metaphors. I'm going to throw at you right now. You see those football games when the fourth quarter happens and all the people put their hands up and go four, 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 because the fourth quarter matters. Most games are won and lost in the fourth quarter. And if you extend that metaphor to a real estate agent, you look at your goals and your business plan for 2018, some, a lot of you aren't there yet. It's the fourth quarter where you're going to get there or fall short. So rather than thinking of these next three months as sort of the downtime, especially as resort people, this is the time to accelerate the time to put more gas in the tank, pick up market share where others are gonna be off vacationing, et cetera, and really take these last three months seriously, not only to finish strong, but anything you do these next three months is going to reflect on 2019 start. Unfortunately, here's the second metaphor, there is no off season in real estate. You don't get the three months of like, okay, I don't have to do anything. If you do, you're losing out you're missing out. You're going to lose clients. You're going to lose market share. So uh, it's a 12 month season and uh, we're in the fourth quarter of this one. So we're going to try to just come up with some fun strategies that will help everybody finish strong um, and start 2019 strong as well. So most of you know that um, I am a total charlatan and I have no real estate background. Uh, and so I don't have all the answers, uh, but <laughs> what I want you to do is just feel free to raise your hand and say, 
this is what I would do in the fourth quarter. This is what I've done in previous years that's worked so that we can all benefit from your expertise and not just uh, my thoughts about how to, how to finish strong. Okay. So um, with that being said, we've got the Godfather in the house. That's good. Nice to see you, Robert. Uh, Kindle. Kindle. Um, yeah. Uh, Jim Jennings was having a hard time getting uh, getting his to uh, to work. I see that. So he's just come and bug Jennifer, and so <laughs> I, can, I can see that's awesome. Jennifer is doing her job. Yep, you've got a well-oiled machine, Mr. Philanius. That's good stuff. Okay, I'm going to share my screen, and uh, I put together this really snazzy uh, "knock your socks off" slideshow. I'm sure everybody's going to be just uh, thrilled by it. So, um, whoops, cancel away. Uh, it's the fourth quarter strategies for a great finish to 2018 and a solid start to 2019. Uh, you've heard it over and over and over, whether it's a Tom Ferry thing or whether it's your MD or your own thoughts, is that the work you do today doesn't show up today. The work you do today shows up in a couple months. That's a real estate thing. The work you do today has a 45 to 90 day lifespan. So whatever you do today, and Keith was saying this to us, Keith from Grand Junction, Today's work puts the turkey on your table. Today's work puts the presents under the tree or takes the family on vacation in December. Today's work doesn't buy your groceries this evening. That was done back in June. So we're thinking of this stuff not only as a good last three months, but as a start to 2019, okay? All right, so this is just a bunch of things uh, in Tom Ferry style of things you can do to make sure that your 2018 finishes strong. If you try to do all 22 or whatever of these, you're gonna, you're gonna wear yourself out. Hopefully you can find three or four things in this uh, litany that you're like, oh, I should do that, I can do that, I always do that, or whatever. Do three or four of them and you're gonna be uh, doing better than most of the agents in your market. First thing you can do, sign up for coaching. We offer free in-house coaching every week for the next six months. Study after study after study has shown that if you're in coaching as a real estate agent, your business grows, your production increases, you get better at what you do. Not because your coaches are super brainy awesome, but because you're being held accountable on a weekly basis to what you said you're going to do. Did you do it? And if you did do it, you're going to get better. That's why you need to sign up for coaching. We have about 15 spots left in our coaching session. So if you've been on the fence, Tell your right agents, you're, you're all over the place on this thing. I love that you're here on the fan club. Sign up for some coaching. Work with Todd, work with Keith, work with me. Work, you'll get assigned to a coach that's going to ask you the questions that sometimes an agent is too afraid to ask themselves. It is good stuff. Sign up for coaching. That's the first and most important thing you could do for a strong 2018 finish. Here's one thing you hear us talking about all the time. Role play. Role play, role play. Recruit someone in your office and role play every week. The best agents in our company, and by that I mean the most productive, guess what they all do? They all script and role play incessantly, religiously, and they're really good at it. You saw it in the listing presentation competition in August. So when that question comes, that out of the blue question about, well, why should I use you when this other company has more market share? They've got the answer because they've scripted it, they've role played it, they've got it up here and they can say it with authority. Recruit someone and role play every week and you will find yourself just doing way more stuff. Here's what I hope happens as I go through this. I hope most of you that are watching this live or on the recording are like, I do that, I do that, I do that. That's awesome. That means that you are uh, at the top of your game. So hopefully you're saying I already do this stuff. Here's the next one. I love this word, call, so I just want to put it in here. Call, re refine, and improve your SOI lists and get them into IQO. SOI stands for Grace Summers, our brand new OM, already has all the lingo down. She knows acronyms better than I do. Sphere of influence. Call it. C-U-L-L means reduce it. Get rid of the, the chaff. Yeah. The weeds, the detritus. Get rid of all those people that you know have no, they don't even exist anymore. Refine it. Make, it. make it clearer to you. Add contact types so that you know, these are people I wanna only send the newsletter to. These are people I wanna send my um, market report to. Refine it. And improve your SOI list. Add people to it. 
hopefully you've got a spreadsheet. This is my this is my uh, my advice to anyone with your SOI: have a master Excel spreadsheet. Anytime you get a new contact, whether you met someone on the chairlift, you bumped into them at the grocery store, you met them at a party, put them in your spreadsheet as much information as you have, and then get them into your CRM, which stands for Customer Relationship Management. Do it the spreadsheet first and then your CRM next because that spreadsheet is the master thing that it's like you will always have that with you. You'll clutch it to your, to your bosom forever and then you can get it in your CRM, okay? And when I say get them in your CRM, the only way you can really um, exploit and leverage your SOI is if it's in your CRM. And for me, that means in IQO, so that you can hit them with your newsletter, so that you can hit them with a market report that you set up every, to go out every month, okay? If this stuff is going over your head, that means you and I need to have a conversation. That means your OM and you need to talk about your CRM and IQO. And we'll just uh, have acronyms galore. Just can't, can't wait. Hey, here's the fourth thing you can do to make your 2018 Awesome. Higher transaction coordination. We have an awesome person in Montrose who for $150, which is about two hours of your time, if I do the math right, two hours of your time will help you get your transactions done. You can let go of all of those phone calls you have to make and signature chasing and everything if you hire our transaction coordination service for 150 bucks. That's two hours of your time untold amounts of stress that you don't have to deal with, mental anguish, by paying $150. So reach out to Shawnee if you have questions about this. She'll be on an upcoming fan club to introduce our new transaction coordinator and talk about the benefits of it. But do yourself a favor and try it once and see if it works. And I bet you that if it feels good, it'll be the best $150 you spend all year except for the $150 gift certificate you're gonna send your MD Right, Eric? Yeah, that's what we're talking about. Okay, there's four things on page one. Only 17 more pages. All right. Hey, plan a client appreciation party. Fall is a really good time to do it uh, because people are local. They're, they're starting to hunker down uh, mid-November before Thanksgiving or that time between Thanksgiving and, and Christmas. Lots of parties happen then, but if you do it at the right time, you're going to get a lot of folks. All you want to do is have them come and, and say a few words, have some drinks on you, mingle, bring a friend. Oh, that's the best thing to do at a client appreciation party. Bring a friend because then you can add them to your SOI and you can start to, to drip on them and then they're going to become a client. But do something for your clients. Okay. Let's see a chat. I can't read the chat. So if you have a question just or an observation or something about my shiny forehead, just jump in and say it. Okay. Uh, you do have to spend some money planning a client, client appreciation party but I think it's money well spent. Any of the higher end agents will tell you it's a thousand bucks a year that they put into their budget and they rent a place for an evening, hors d'oeuvres, drinks, two hours, say some things, and it goes a long way. Because those people out there that you worked with two months ago, two years ago, whatever, they know that you are uh, doing for them and that matters. Hey, hey Derek, this is Michael Ward uh, talking. Eric Hi, Michael. Is this um, something that we, 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 we could do as a, as a um, office to a client? Of I mean, yes. And in fact, Michael, Bozeman and Montrose both have had their client appreciation parties where each agent got to invite 10 people or so in the last week. Montrose's was last night at the Ute uh, Cultural Center in Montrose, and it was a 160 people, awesome event for everybody. Uh, Bozeman's they held at the stadium for that the Bobcats played football in. I don't think they played flag football, but it, it was a it was a way to just bring people together and show everybody what a great group of agents, your MD, all that good stuff. Keith will come to to the tell your ride one. I know Todd would probably come. It's a really excellent idea, Michael. Um, so as an office, you have a little bit of a budget for that. So you can talk to Eric. Uh, <laughs> I'm Eric will, Eric will set it all up for you. No, you can talk to Teresa and Eric about your client appreciation party budget. Um, different offices have different budgets. It might be a thousand, it might be 2,500. So definitely um, talk about that at your sales meeting if, if agents want to do that. Thanks for that question. 
Um, this next one is recruit an agent to CBDP. And I'm not saying, hey, help your MD out by bringing in agents. I am saying that. But here's why I think it's really important that you try to do this. Because when you play a recruiter, it helps you talk about your company in ways that, and think about your company in ways that are very different than you talking with your clients. When you're talking to another agent about the tools, the systems, the people, the culture, the attitude, the trainings, it's gonna, it's gonna help you with your why, it's gonna help you with your identification with the company, and it just might help you grow your office, which uh, as we've seen here in Sun Valley in the last year, and as Grand Junction sees on a monthly basis, fail. The bigger the office, the better, because everybody's just there and they're all, the more people rowing the boat, the faster the boat goes, okay? So recruit an agent to CBDP. You'll make Eric happy, you'll make Derek happy, you'll make Todd, et cetera, et cetera, but it will also improve your ability to talk and think about you and your company. I guarantee it, okay? Here's one that if a lot of you are already, um, parts of your body are squinching up. Um, commit to making five plus videos in the next three months. When I say make a video, you don't have to have fancy software and like intro and music. I mean, that's what I do, I love it. But uh, get a camera, get your phone, right? And have your OM, she's awesome at it. She's done two for me. And she's getting more compliments than I am about her, her ability to film me. Say, record me and just say something. Content is king. Don't be an idiot, but say something about real estate. Put it on your Facebook page, your business Facebook page, and boost it if you want, or copy the link and send it to your SOI and say, hey, take a look at my new listing. And it's a video. People are watching video more and more and more, and they're reading less and less and less. If you're not doing this with some regularity, hi, this is Derek, I'm at my new listing. It's coming on in three days, but I care about my customers so much, I want you to have the chance to see it first. Call me, this is not gonna be on the market long. It's not even so that they'll call you to, to buy from you, it's so that they know that you are above everybody else, that you're doing better and more cutting edge things than everybody else. That's the whole point, you're establishing yourself. Every time you make a video and post it and share it with people, you're establishing yourself as someone who is a, a two percenter. So commit to making five plus videos and send me one so I can see it. I'll send you mine. I look like a dork in it. I did the Humpty dance on Wednesday on my video, you know, the Humpty dance. Cause, because why? Because I wanna be distinctive. I want people to know we have fun here. And I also gave some information too. make these videos. Um, the one on the bottom, it's kind of hard to read. Reconnect with your referral network. Uh, especially these resort towns, but even Bozeman, Montrose, and Grand Junction, you need to have referral networks out there. Tell you right, where do your people come from? New York, Miami, uh, Dallas, um, Chicago. You need to have five agents in each of those markets that you can call by name. And if you haven't done that yet, you need to figure out how to do it. You need to reach out to some Coldwell Banker luxury agents in these markets, send them your information, say, hey, we get a lot of traffic. I'll do for you, you do for me. Create that referral network so that you guys can benefit from each other and that the person that got here from Chicago who works with a Coldwell Banker agent in Chicago doesn't come to Telluride and call, call you know, Jim Hickey from Sotheby's. They call you because their agent knows you. You've got to get this stuff done. Reconnect with your referral network. And, and your referral network is also the people that have done referrals for you in the past. Are you hitting them with some love? Did you send them a card this year because they sent you a referral? Did you send them a bottle of wine? Reconnect with them. Don't assume they're going to refer you forever because every other agent out there is trying to get their business too. Okay? All right. Um, next. All right. Create a distinctive holiday touch. Uh, don't take that wrong, but what I mean by this is, um, what are you going to do for your holiday card? Are you going to send out just an email card? Hey, Merry Christmas and Happy Hanukkah. Are you going to um, put together something more thoughtful? Are you going to make a video? Just wanted to say, have a great holiday season to you and your family. I love uh, working with you. It's been great to, and thank you for your referrals. Merry Christmas. What are you going to do? Make it distinctive. Don't use just any old card that you email and assume you're going to be done. Send texts to your 30 top uh, clients, individual texts. 
you can copy and paste, but you put their name in each time, send them a little video, a 10 second video via text to your top 30 people on your SOI. Make sure they know you're thinking about them as the calendar turns, okay? This next one is initiate a drive to help others. Uh, a coat drive, a, a shoe drive, a hat and glove drive. Do something that's gonna benefit people in your community and that you can, don't take this wrong, you can promote yourself as a person of service, right? And you're doing something good, but people will be like, man, not only is, is she a good realtor, but she's helping people less fortunate. That's awesome. You're going to oblige people to use you if you do things like initiate a drive to help others. Okay, so be thinking about ways you could do that. Do it as an office. At an office I worked at previously, we did a coat drive every, every winter, and here in Sun Valley, that's a big deal. 250 coats, we got to promote it on our social media. Agents got to have photos, we got to go places. It matters. Now, are you going to places where you're gonna get clients? Probably not, but your social media is going to your people and everybody loves it when people are, are of service, okay? Uh, join a new club this fall. If, if you are feeling like it's slack season, you got a little bit of time, go do something new with new people. Get Increase your SOI. Don't do this just for your business. Do it because you're into it. Uh, don't join the curling club at the local skating rink if you hate skating or rinks. We have an agent here. She just started. I hope she doesn't mind me sharing this. She just started. She used to be a tennis player. She just started playing pickleball last week. She's she's at pickleball right now. She's already belongs to two clubs. She's already probably got 15 to 20 new people. They already know her because she's she promotes herself in town. But guess what? Now that they have a pickleball thing in common, she's going to get some business from that. That's not why she's doing it. And people will see through it if you join something just to get business. But all of a sudden, she's got 20 new names of people that are going to have to think, should I use this person? Because I know we have this thing in common. So join a new club this fall. Start a new club. Something like that. Okay. Uh, Keith is always talking about this book. And I uh, need you to read a book this fall. Fall is the time for blankets, hot cider, cocoa, uh, and, and a book fires, pumpkins, all that stuff. Never Split the Difference is the book you should read. And I hope you've already read it. It's a real estate book about commissions, but it's also, as so many of these books are, it's a book about life. It's a book about negotiations with your kids, with your spouse, with your clients, with your boss, with your animals. Never Split the Difference is going to change the way you think about how you handle your business on a daily basis. So this should say read a book. But that's like saying, hey, someone call 911. Like, no one's going to do it. This is why I'm giving you the book to read. Never split the difference. Um, now you can go find it and read it. I'm sure it's at a library. Uh, you can probably find it online. Maybe I'll even send you a link. But it's a good one, and it's built for real estate agents. And it's not about, like, making all the money you can. It's about how to make sure that you value your business and your worth as an agent. Okay? All right. Uh, just a few more here. You guys have been great. And again, jump in if you have any thoughts about any of these, if you do them, if you found this one didn't work or whatever. Recommit to your morning routine. A lot of us fall out of this in the summer because we're so busy. Maybe we are drinking a little bit more than usual so we don't get up as early. Now is the time to recommit to your morning routine. What is your morning routine? Uh, there's a great book called uh, Miracle Morning that all of us got, well, I got when I joined the, the company. And it says to do six things every morning. And it can take 10 minutes or it can take two hours. It's to breathe or meditate in no particular order. Uh, it's to visualize. It's to do your affirmations. It's to do some exercise. It's to read and it's to write. Now that's six things every morning. That might be too much. But are you doing two things? Are you doing affirmations in the morning about what a good person you are, what good service you offer your clients, not, oh, I'm going to make $100,000 uh, $100, today. That's not an affirmation. That's a hope. An affirmation is telling yourself what you're good at, what you believe in, so that when you, when you think it, you do it. Okay? Exercise. Reading. Right now, my morning routine is I get up a half hour earlier to read because I've really been enjoying some books lately, and my new OOM, Grace, is an English major too, and I know if I'm not reading, I'm going to look stupid to her, and I cannot look stupid to Grace. She's here from Chicago. 
I got to, I got to up my game. So I read every morning. I know Eric meditates. Is that correct? Give me a hand raise, Eric. Is that, yep. Okay. Make sure you're doing something besides coffee and cursing. Okay. <laughs> uh, this next one, refine or create, I hope you don't have to create your AVP, your agent value proposition. This is your 30 seconds when you meet someone in the grocery store and they're like, boy, I've been thinking about real estate. What, why, why should I use you? You better have this in the can. 30 seconds. Bam. You can tell your script, your story, your distinctive story about what makes you better than all the rest. Oh, I buy, I, I'm a real estate agent and uh, I'd love to talk with it. Oh, thanks. Thanks for not giving me anything that makes me want to use you. Okay. All of us MDs have our AVP. It's not quite called the AVP, but we have a 30 second pitch that at the drop of a hat we can deliver um, to agents that we run into out there that we think should be in our company. Uh, mine goes a little bit like this, like, hey, I know you're a good agent, but we can help make you a great agent. We have the systems and tools, the people, the culture of production that will turn your business from pretty good to great. I would love to sit and have coffee with you. If you have some time, why don't you give me a call and let's, uh, let's go have coffee. Whatever. Make them want to work with you to at least hear what you have to say in your AVP. Here's one. Improve one system. Whether it's your listing presentation system, whether it's your transaction system, whether it's your system for uh, IQ uh, CRMs, whether it's your system for um, crime, how you dress every morning. I don't know. Improve one system in the next three months. Commit to saying, I'm going to make this one better so that I don't have to think so much about it. I mentioned the clothes thing sort of jokingly, but I just read that Mark Zuckerberg, the Facebook guy, he wears jeans, a t shirt, and a sweatshirt every day because that's one less thing he has to think about. He has other things to think about. If you, if you spend five or seven minutes in front of your closet every morning, that's taking away from five, from not five, seven minutes, but from the mental energy you can put into how to uh, work with your clients better. So, but if you improve one system in the next three months and make it a habit, 2019 is gonna feel that much better for you. Okay. Um, Recommit to your farm. Hopefully you're farming. If you're not, then you need to commit to your farm. But I know farming, which is to say like sending postcards or door knocking in a certain area consistently, you get all excited, you do three or four months. I've got a couple agents who have done three or four months and now it's like, oh, haven't done one for three months. Recommit to it. Get back in front of their faces so that when it comes time for them to choose a realtor, they have to consider you because you've been hitting them with information, with your brand, with your expertise for months in a row. Okay, so recommit to your farm. If you have any questions about how to farm, where to farm, why to farm, who to farm, you can call me, you can talk to your MD, um, or to Shawnee, who has a lot of experience with that too. She was raised on a farm. You guys have been great so far. Your patience is unbelievable. Only 15 more pages. Grace has a Drake button on today. Awesome, the rapper Drake from Toronto. Okay, anyway, here's, here's something you can do. Uh, I just saw this two days ago here in Sun Valley. There was a, a new buyer class down at the community campus at one of our um, community centers. The MLS put on, there were three or four agents. None of them were from our office. And I was like, why aren't anyone from our office at this thing? MLS puts on a thing for new buyers, people who have never bought or sold real estate before. Post one, put one on, call your MLS and say, hey, I want to host a... a a one hour session that I can moderate. Uh, that's all about how to, um, how to sell your home, how to buy your home, how to, how to improve your, your home's value. Because all those people that go to it are going to then be obligated to you, to think of you, if not use you, when it comes time for them to do their real estate. Okay, be the host, be the moderator, Invite a couple of other agents or be the hog, but just make sure that you're delivering content that is useful to people who are buying and selling real estate. Okay. This next one, we are in the midst of um, getting a business plan that we want to distribute to all of our agents, um, whether it's the Tom Ferry one or one that's Colwell Banker is producing, we're not 100% sure yet. So you will get a blank business plan from us, but in the next three months, you'll be creating it. Last year, we did it in late October and had them in, in hand by November so that 2019's goals are all set and that you have something to move to, okay? So 
If you have your own business plan that you'd like to use and want to share it with your MD or with me, by all means do that. But we will be getting you something probably by the middle of next month that uh, all of your MDs will be helping you uh, put together. Okay. Um, what's this one? Create an informational campaign for your A and B SOI. First of all, your A and B, like your SOI should be a thousand people, let's say. You, you can't be you can't be in touch with a thousand people with any kind of authenticity, but you can be in touch with 50 of those thousand, the 50 that bring you the most business, that do the most referrals, that are closest to buying or selling in the next year or so, they should be your A and B. You should know your SOI, here's the entirety, but here's my top 50, here's my top 100, here are the people I need to love on more in the next three months so that I'm guaranteed to get their business. So the informational campaign, what is that? Um, Alan Brown, who is a, does 50 deals plus a year in Montrose, you know what he does every Sunday morning? He puts together the list of all the things that have sold the MLS in Montrose, and he just makes a PDF of it, and he sends it to his SOI, A and B. No commentary, no nothing. Every week, they get this valuable piece of information from him, and whether they read it or not, what happens is they go, oh, it's time for me to buy pro Alan Brown sends me this thing every month, every week. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call him. He's my guy. He is the authority. He knows about things. What else could your informational campaign be? It could be a little narrative every, every month, every week, whatever. Just make sure, make sure that all your pieces, your touching pieces with SOI aren't just fluff. They've got to have information. Market reports, analyses, um, predictions, careful about that. But do something where you're touching them with information. I think this is the last one. Oh, thank God. Praise whoever, whoever. I said this at the outset, there's no off season. If you're looking to, to the next two months, resort folks as your downtime, you're looking at it all wrong. This is when you build for the winter, for Christmas, for that holiday season when the thousands of skiers come to town because as Eric will say, you're seasonally optimistic. You believe it's gonna be a great winter. The people are gonna come. You better be ready for them. You better have been calling the people from Palm Desert to come and let them know that it's going to be a great winter. Let them know something about the market and let them know when they get here, you want to go to lunch to talk about how awesome Sun Valley or Telluride or even Vail. <laughs> Just kidding. Vail is. Okay. Eric, you got that joke, I'm sure. Hey, clean your desk. This is important. Eric shared this one with me this morning. Dude, clean your desk. It's a good time. Take an hour and really clean your desk. Don't just move crap off of it. Go through the drawers. Get rid of stuff that doesn't matter. It feels good. And it's good for your business. Clean your office. If you've got people coming into your office and there's blueprints everywhere and there's used potato chip wrappers and that makes no impression at all. Clean your office. Pride of ownership. And it'll help your mental energy too because you'll have more room for things. Okay? Last two things. You want to take these? No, I'm doing okay. Grace is like, what did I sign off for? Improve your social media presence. The word is improve. The word is an increase. Some of you do not need to increase your presence. You do not need to post more. You need to make them better. Improve your social media presence. Don't just post whatever comes to mind. Be thoughtful about what you're putting on Instagram. Be thoughtful about what you're putting on Facebook. And as a social media um, consumer, digester, here's something that I don't like. And you can tell me whatever, dude. That's the way it is. I don't like it when I see the same post on Facebook and on Instagram. And I know there's a simple button that says post to Facebook. Yes, both. But I feel like, what? do I have to like them both? What, which one do you want me to like? I would love some feedback about that. But I, I think they're two different platforms. And I think, I feel like, leave me alone a little bit when I see the exact same post from, on Instagram and Facebook. Something to think about. But improve your social media presence. Use the stories in Instagram. Do more videos on Instagram. You can do them live from your phone and upload it right to Instagram. Do more Facebook Lives, even if it's not about real estate. Because everything you do as an agent, this is the most beautiful thing about being a real estate agent. Every single freaking thing you do is about real estate. You're the luckiest prof professionals in the country because everything you do is about your business. You went skiing today, it's about your business, really. Because there's a chance 
you have your card on you, that you're going to meet someone that's going to do business. Your grocery trip store trips are about your business because you're going to see people in there. Go at the right time. See people. Make sure they know that you are a community member. Mention real estate. Oh, yeah. Hey, how, how was your vacation? Great. Say, man, Sun Valley, have you noticed that it's just incredibly busy right now? And so everything you do is, is about your real estate. It's awesome. You're so lucky. And you're unlucky in some ways. I know you're like, but I can never get away from it. I know, but there is no off season. Last thing I have for you is um, if you're looking for clients, uh, don't, I mean, spend whatever money you want on Zillow, do whatever you want in those things. All I know is that every time you do that, you get more headaches. Every time, here's me talking, and this isn't coming from Todd, it's not coming from Tom, this is me talking. The agents I work with who spend more and more time and more and more money, more and more mental energy, thinking about Zillow leads, thinking about Facebook leads, thinking about all these online leads, I can see them just like shriveling because it's a lot of work, it's a lot of money, and you have no idea. Most of these leads are just fly-by-night, looky-loos who waste your time. You want real leads, you want real clients, you want real buyers and sellers, sit open houses. Look at your office's inventory and if you're an agent who has a smaller SOI or isn't as busy right now, call the agents that are. Hey, Godfather, you've got two great listings. I, I want, can I hold this one open two times this weekend? We have the festival in town. I know you're at it. Yes, those buyers are yours, I hope. Sit open houses. They don't have to be yours. Anyone that walks in that's not attached to an agent, that's your client, man. So many stories in Sun Valley, and that's who I can mainly speak for, of people who got buyers because they had an open house. It's amazing. So spend all your money you want on Zillow. Spend all your time SEO, where, how do I get stickier? Whatever, Go, sit open houses. Do, do each for three months and then weigh it out. How much money did you spend on Zillow? $4,000 and I got these four awesome leads. And Godfather, I know you've gotten business from Zillow, so I'm not disparaging it totally. I'm just saying that, if you have to do either and you look at the bank account and you look at the amount and you look at the, the return on investment, I guarantee God dang to you, the open houses are going to weigh a lot more. Okay. It's one of the cardinal ways, to, cardinal rules. I don't know. Cardinal, is that a Christian Catholic thing? Whatever. It's one of the ways you build your client base sitting open houses. In the bigger markets, I could, I could also add FISBOs and, and expireds here, but um, open houses, Ask your agents that have a, a big inventory if you can sit there open houses. Okay. All right. I'm going to stop sharing and I'm hopefully going to stop talking. I'll send this along because I know everybody's dying to have this uh, clog their email. <laughs> um, but, uh, oh, Alan, nice to see you. Hi, Judy. How you doing? Yeah. Someone's bringing a little life and pizzazz to this. Thank goodness. Hey, Alan, do you, can you unmute and speak about your client appreciation party for just a moment that you had last night? Because Michael Ward from Telluride was saying, hey, do offices and offices do this? What did you guys do? Yeah, so uh, we had it out at the uh, Indian Ute Museum here in town. They have an awesome, like, big patio there and an indoor event area. So uh, we did it on a, a Mexican theme. We had, uh, we hired a, a local guy here, does street tacos. He, cooked all those there, you know, to order. And we had margaritas and beer. We had about 170 people show up. Uh, it was a two hour event from five till seven. Uh, it was awesome. Weather was great, it really cooperated. And, you know, it's a good way just to keep in front of your customers. Our customers are, you know, they're all very appreciative of being invited and they think it's a great thing, so. You know, this is the second one we did. We did one last year and it was a big hit. So and I think yesterday's was a big hit also. And so what what was your parameters for the agents? As far as what, inviting well, customers or? Yeah. Yeah, we didn't really put any uh, restrictions on it other than, you know, just invite, use your good sense to invite, you know, some of your best customers, people that you've been in business with, you know, done business with a long time. But if you wanted to invite somebody you just sold the house to, you know, 30 days ago, that was fine too. We didn't really put a lot of restrictions on it. So, 
uh, you know, obviously there's a few agents in here that invited a lot more people than others, like myself and Valerie and Dennis probably invited. Uh, I invited at least 60 or 70 past customers. I think Valerie sent out 200. Dennis probably invited 50 or 60. But then there was, there was people that only invited like five or 10. So, uh, you know, it was across the board. Yeah. It was, there's a lot of, uh, of my customers and Valerie's there for sure, but it's, it's always a great event. And I, I heard you before I came up on the video mention my name about the, uh, my report I send out on Sunday mornings. Are you mad at me? No, no, no. <laughs> No, I want I, I I bring it up because last night at that event, two of my customers said to me, "Hey, we just love getting your your report every Sunday morning. We read it every Sunday." So, uh, people do it. People, I know they do because you know whenever I run into people that read it on a regular basis, they always tell me they do. So. Alan told me, in fact, that he has other agents from other offices asking to be put on that list. I do. <laughs> so, and from a recruiting standpoint, when that office crumbles a little bit, guess who they're going to call? Hey, Alan, I want to come and work with you because I know that you and your office do, operates the right way. So this client appreciation party, I know some of you agents are like, well, I don't want my clients seeing other agents and all. I want to be like really possessive and everything, but there is something to uh, the, the power of an office, of a, of a community of clients and, and agents that feels really good. Um, you know, especially in some of our markets where we're not the biggest, either in market share or size, for a, a client appreciation party that's office wide, for all those clients to come and see, wow, you guys really have a lot of people that uh, you work with. That makes a really uh, big statement as well. Now, I'll tell you, right, you just had your grand opening a couple months ago, and I and I think it was a bit of a client appreciation party. It, was it not, Eric, or was it? Yes, that's uh, yeah. yeah. We had uh, we had a number yeah. of uh, of. Uh, of customers and clients there. Uh, I think we blew our budget on that evening. Uh, but next week, we are going to have a, a broker appreciation party up at our house. So that'll be good. Is that for just your agents or you've invited other agents from no, other it's just for us. Okay. Excellent. End of, the season, end of the season party. Yeah. So what we are going to do here, we have a happy hour. I think most offices have a happy hour once a month or so. Ours is coming up next Thursday. And since we have our new OM, Grace Summers here, right there, um, I'm inviting, we're inviting agents on our hit list, as well as some of the title and people that she's gonna be talking to on the phone all the time to come to our happy hour. Uh, now it's not a client appreciation party, it's more of a recruiting thing. But again, anytime you can show other agents, other clients, other real estate vendors, how awesome your office is, it makes weight. It's important. Even the title people, they talk to agents all the time. Someone's doing a deal with them and the title person knows that they're a little bit unhappy. They're not getting support at their office. They're going to call me because I invite them to their happy hours. And I send them my stupid little videos and I send them my market reports every month. They're going to call me when they know it's time for me to go talk to an agent. All of that stuff matters. Okay. And all of it makes all of us stickier as an agent and as an office and as an MD and as an OM. So um, those are just little things you can do and they don't break the bank. We're gonna spend you know, 100 bucks on our happy hour next week. Um, uh, and that's mainly for the dancer. <laughs> no, um, so it's, it's, it's all good. And, he, and, and here's the thing, Alan sent 60 invites. Even if 20 people show up, the other 40, just because they didn't show up doesn't really matter. What matters is they got an invite from their agents to this thing. And I'll bet you, you wouldn't even want all 60 of them to show up, but in, in perfect um, giving tradition, it's sometimes it's the thought that counts. Yeah, and the I, I, I heard from quite a number of them that couldn't make it for one reason or another, they're out of town, but they emailed me or called and said, hey, I, thanks for the invite, but sorry, we're not gonna be able to make it. So it, yeah, it's just another touch point that you get to make with them. That's excellent. So, uh, and then you can follow up, you know, every one of these events you do gives you four or five contact points. The invite, the did you get my invite? You're here. And then next week, hey, I just want to call and, and thank you for coming. Hope you had a good time. Yeah. Uh, we didn't talk about real estate, but if you want to, Montrose is on fire right now. Our office is number one in the market. Did you know that? Let's go look at some stuff, right? I did get a deal out of it last night too. 
<laughs> Alan, can we ever have a conversation where you don't tell me you're going to a closing or you didn't get, like, can you ever just be a normal non real estate agent person? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Sunday. <laughs> ah, that's awesome. Um, okay. So what, what else is out there that we could have put on this? Cause I can add slides galore. Like well, the email will not care. I can send 400 slides. Any, this, anything this else? Is, this, is, this is Michael Ward. I, I just like to give a, a pat on the back to Cobo Banker Distinctive Properties for the, the um, just listed postcards um, or the, the postcards that we've sent out the 150 that we get for each listing, because we've done that now. And we've just last week, we've gotten two, New, almost new listings. We're working on new listings from just people in the neighborhood. So that was a, a big shout out to you guys. Thank you so much for that. That's awesome to hear, Michael. And so I did not put order a CB package on here just because I, um, I mean, I hope everybody's doing it. I, the numbers are a little bit telling. Some offices don't use them, others do. And there's a little bit of a correlation between offices that are being really productive and offices that are using the CB packages. And so to Michael's point, even the CB1, which I think in Grand Junction costs like 25 cents or something. I don't even know what it costs. It costs 199 here in Sun Valley, but you guys, it's Grand Junction, so it's a little bit less. But you get 150 postcards sent to a mailing list of your choice saying just list it. And then when Judy sells that thing four days later, she gets 150 more postcards that can be sent to that same mailing list that say just sold. And it's all about Judy Raymond and it's all about the company and people can't ignore success. Having a listing is success. Selling it is even more success. You, you couple those things up for this very low price and uh, it's, it's pretty hard to argue with. So that's great, Michael. I really appreciate hearing and just that. Just following up with Mike, what Michael just said, I've gotten two listings this year directly from uh, sold postcards getting sent out to the neighborhood around properties that I sold and I've gotten two listings out of that this year. So it works. That's excellent. So um, unfortunately, Alan can't sell those listings because, but anyway, that's, that's good. That's good to hear too. Um, letters work. If you've got a farm and you're struggling to see any results from it, try a letter in an envelope because those things are rare and rare. And if you can make it look like it's not some company generated thing, in other words, maybe even hand address it, I don't know, it's gonna get opened. And it's a different type of touch because the postcards are pretty easy to throw away because you can see it, boom, it's gone. But it, a letter might be a little bit different. So try a letter if you're struggling with your farm uh, responses so far. Keeping in mind that farming usually takes 12 to 18 months to result in anything. And keeping in mind that if you're just sending postcards, your farming is equivalent to crop dusting. Okay. I don't know where I heard that. I heard it though. It's just throwing stuff out there and you're not actually harvesting anything. You've got to get in front of these people. You've got to uh, knock on their doors. You've got to be present in that farm if you want it to work. Those are all the things I know. Uh, Godfather, anything? I, I know you asked about transaction coordination. Um, Godfather sent a chat. Godfather is Robert Schilling. And if you saw where he sits every time for these things, you'd understand why I call him that. He's got books and like elephant heads behind him and all sorts of things. So he looks very, very regal. Anyway, he asked about transaction coordination. You can purchase it at any point in your transaction. You can purchase it the moment you bring on a listing so that it takes care of some of that front end stuff, but it certainly covers the life of the listing. Or you can purchase it at the time it goes under contract, whether you're a buyer or seller. Then you hand the things off to, Alan, what's her name in Montrose? Dana. 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 Dana is getting versed in all of the different markets and all of the different vendors. And pretty soon it'll be just like she's talking, your client is talking to your own assistant. Okay. So uh, 150 is where it starts. It goes up to about three or 400, I think, if you double end a big deal. Um, but uh, it starts at 150. So give it a shot and you'll find that, wow, I didn't even have to think about the inspection. That's awesome. That was worth $150. Um, Judy, are you leaving me? Okay, well, it was great to see you. And uh, we'll see you in a month because I'm going to be down at Grand Junction for our uh, leadership meeting. I can't wait to see you.
Okay. Will they help putting ads together for listings? Robert's asking about transaction coordination. Probably not, uh, but uh, you can certainly lean on me for that. Any type of marketing stuff I'm happy to look at or to put together for you if it's uh, not too cumbersome. Um, all right. Hey, I want to say tell you right. I just love your presence on here. We've got Eric and Jennifer and Karen and JJ and you know, at least one of the wards, if not both of them. Really appreciate that. And uh, Vale's represented here well, too. Both, so. of the, both of the wards are here. We're both here. Her, her camera doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it probably does. She just is uh, thoughtful of you, Michael. So thanks. <laughs> thanks, Derek. <laughs> all right. Well, hey, have a great weekend. Keep up all the good work and keep putting deals together. And the last three months, this is where the game is won or lost. So, and Robert has a bad hair day. I didn't know there were any other kind for you, Robert. So thanks for that information. Awesome job, everybody. We will see you next time. Thanks, Bye. Derek. Yep, my pleasure, Eric. Later, Derek. Thank Bye, you. Josh. Later. Bye, Lynn. I was just kidding about Michael. Actually, I haven't met him, so maybe I'm not.